raising its concerns about the detention of a very popular blogger in Saudi Arabia. Fuad al-Farhan was arrested last month. The Saudi Interior Ministry says he violated the regulations of the kingdom. He's being questioned by Saudi officials. The State Department says its message to Saudi Arabia, pretty clear. Our understanding is that he's being questioned. I've seen some public comments from Saudi officials. And uh, our message to the Saudi government was, was pretty clear. It's what you heard me talk a little bit about yesterday, and that is that the United States stands for freedom of expression. It's an important element of any thriving society. It's a cornerstone of uh, any democratic society. And wherever, uh, wherever people are seeking to express themselves via the Internet or via other means, whether that's in Saudi Arabia or elsewhere around the world, we stand for that freedom of expression. Now, Al Farhan's arrest and detainment has really shaken up the blogging community there in Saudi Arabia. Some say it makes them more determined than ever to keep on speaking out. We're going to turn to one of Al Farhan's friends, Ahmed Al Omran, is a leading English language blogger in Saudi Arabia. He recently began an online petition on his site to free Al Farhan. And if you can, if we can start all of this off, let me just ask you: Is individualism? really at risk, is it at risk of being outlawed there in Saudi Arabia? Well, as a society, uh, in the Saudi society, is such a con uh, conservative society, individualism in general is, is frowned upon. But is it in danger or not? You know, uh, when you have an incident like that, you, you can feel, yeah, that the individualism can be threatened in this way. Well, let's go back to some of what Fuad said. I want to uh, pull up a quote here and share it with the audience. He wrote, in Saudi Arabia, there's no guarantee that you won't be arrested because of your frankness and speaking your mind on your blog. And he continues, there's also no guarantee when you hide and write in internet forums using a pseudonym. You know, you had a response to that, I think, uh, on your website as well, on your blog site as well, that's called uh, Saudi Jeans. Dot org. What are you calling on Saudis to do in response to Fuad's detention? Well, I think they should stand for him and support him and ask the government to release him immediately. You're, you're also saying, aren't you, that anonymity should be cast aside. Use your own names? Sorry? You're also saying that people should use their own, their real names, and post their own real opinions, rather than trying to hide behind pseudonyms? Yes, if you believe in what you are talking about and what you are writing about, you should, you should be able to stand for, to, for what you are saying using your real name, not hiding. Because if you believe in what you are saying, you should use your real name, not hiding. Why, why to hide if you have nothing wrong to, uh, to be afraid from. You know, have people reacted with fear? I mean, what are the subjects that perhaps people are saying that's a no-go zone? Well, you know, the, the margin for freedom of expression in Saudi Arabia has, has expanded in the last few years, and there are, you know, p uh, the press and the bloggers are now more able to, to write about stuff that usually used to be taboo and no one is allowed to write about. But there are still some red lines here and there. Your friend uh, Fuad still in jail right now. I mean, what would be your message to him? I want to tell him that don't be afraid. We are still here for you. We will keep on supporting you and we will keep working until you are released and f you are released free and back to your friends and family. You know, for young Saudis, why is blogging so important? When you have when you have a country where the the freedom of expression is very limited, the internet and blogging especially provides such a good outlet for the young population to express themselves freely away from the 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 censored media and all the other restrictions that that are that are usually there when you are living in such a society. So, the internet and blogging is providing uh, a new outlet for them, a new freedom for them to express themselves. Has, is discussion of the Saudi royal family completely off limits? Have you ever brought it up on a blog? Would you? No. 
No. That one, you think that's right? Well, I think no one should be, you know, above the law. So if someone is, is, if someone is violating the law, he should be criticized. It doesn't matter who he, who he is or uh, on what position that he is. But any discussion of any topic that concerns the royal family, you wouldn't bring it up. That's just not part of what you want to talk about. Well, not necessarily, but, you know... Uh, it would land you in talking, jail, wouldn't it? You know, it? when you are talking... What? It would land you in jail, do you think? Not necessarily. All right, well, listen. Uh, Ahmed Al-Omran, I want to leave really it really depends on... Yeah. It really depends... It really depends on how you how you write about these issues and how you how you decide to take them in, from what view and what angle. All right. Well, uh, Ahmed there uh, standing up for his friend Fuad Al Farhan, who is being held since December the 10th and being questioned, and it raises a lot of questions uh, about freedom of speech, freedom of uh, uh, the ability to write and express your opinions in Saudi Arabia. We're going to continue to follow this story. If you want to weigh in on the controversy that surrounds Fuad Al Farhan. Let us steer you toward our blog for Inside the Middle East. Hala Garani is hosting the discussion, and you can find it by following the link that you'll see at cnn.com forward slash IME for Inside the Middle East, cnn.com slash IME. You'll find lots of information about Hala's weekly program and have a chance to submit your own comments.